Sybil Chains is a new machine learning library brought to you by a collaboration between Puma's AI, Roche, and the University of Maryland. It's optimized for problems such as fitting nonlinear mixed effects models or neural ODEs um, that tend to use much smaller uh, neural networks than in more traditional machine learning. In these problems, you have uh, an, a dynamical system where, where you have you know, unknown dynamical behavior and you want to use a, a neural network or, uh, to fit it. So being focused on small size, that means uh, trying to eliminate uh, overheads uh, is one, was one of the top priorities of the library. These things such as you know, memory allocations and dynamic dispatches have not been the focus of a more traditional library such as Flux uh, because, I mean, the theory is that these, uh, these overheads are O of 1 and therefore nothing uh, in comparison to something O and cubed like a matmol. Um, and they, they've therefore just not been prioritized in, in, uh, in other frameworks. And that leave, left sort of a niche for a small size focused library such as, as Simple Chains. Uh, the example here that I'm going to walk you through is, however, a little bit more traditional. It is fitting the MNIST digit uh, data set where there's handwritten digits uh, between 0 and 9 and trying to classify them. Uh, this data set contains 70,000 images, of which we put 60,000 in the training set and 10,000 in the test set. The images are 28 by 28 with a single uh, channel of, uh, of color because they're grayscale. Um, the reason for this example is because this is uh, well a common example that you will find in most uh, frameworks, or already there. So it's you know a, a nice basis for comparison, and also because it's uh, while much smaller than anything people would use in traditional machine learning, it is uh, much larger than anything that you're likely to want to. Uh, fit in a neural ODE, and if we're seeing a large performance benefit here, you know that the you know small size focus has not caused, uh, or it has not eroded yet by the time here, and you know, therefore you're likely to have a, uh, have, you know, good performance on any uh, of the, the problems that, that a scientific machine learning application uh, is likely to actually want to, to use. Now, uh, one thing to remember is always make sure that you start Julia with multiple threads. Here you see I started it with the 436 on a 36 thread system. Um, it Julia does not start with multiple threads by default, so you are going to have to set this. Um, additionally, uh, however, it's worth noting that simple chains will by default only use one core per physical core of the system so even though i started with 36 threads it will use 18 uh, because it's an 18 core system simple chains is also good at making use of avx 512 which the cpu has and therefore you're likely to uh, get much better uh, performance on such a system uh, now on to the model syntax itself here we have a we construct a simple chain. The name simple is uh, largely in reference to the fact that currently it only supports feed forward networks, but we are, there are some plans to implement uh, more complicated uh, topologies in the future. But for now, it's simply uh, feed forward. One layer feeds into the next. Uh, the first argument here, we have a tuple indicating the input size. So we have you know, 28 by 28 by one images. Uh, the, we specify the input size here so that it can check uh, that versus the incoming data set. And because here we make the input size static uh, so that the network will know sort of the, the sizes of, of all these inputs. Uh, next, we have a convolution layer that does a five by five convolution and maps then, so the five by five, you know, maps the first dimensions and then it maps this one channel to six channels. We don't have to specify the one to six here because you know it can infer the one from the previous layer. Uh, Julie is all about inference after all, right? Uh, so then we have a max pool layer and then another convolution that maps the six to 16, and then another the max pool, and then we flatten the first three dimensions 
that way we can start feeding them into uh, dense layers that have you know 120, 84, and then finally 10 outputs, 10 outputs for you know the 10 different digits. Um, as another comment though, the, the choice uh, of only specifying the outputs was mentioned to uh, because I believe in the you know the dry principle. Whenever possible, try not to repeat yourself. Have just you know one canonical uh, source for any particular bit of information. Now, after you know we define the network, we also can def well make another copy of this network where we add a loss layer here, or we uh, we use logit cross entropy loss. Now, we initialize some random parameters. Uh, create some pre-allocated gradient, which is actually not necessary. The train batch can do so itself. Um, and then finally, we, you know, uh, get an estimate of the loss in the training data and then on the test data. The runtime here was, of course, dominated by compilation on the first run, but on future runs of train batched, it is, of course, much faster. Um, here in this train batched, we you know, add the network with a loss in it, the, the training data, we specify Atom, the Atom optimizer, and we run it for 10 epochs. Train batched uh, the, r shuffles the, the data and between each batch um, so that you get you know, random batches on each epoch, which tends to greatly improve the, the performance or the, you know, the, the accuracy uh, after training. Running a benchmark on on train batched, we see that you know using benchmark tools, it actually takes under 1.2 seconds to uh, run the 10 epics. So it takes maybe uh, under less than 12 milliseconds per epic, which includes you know shuffling all, all the data and then um, calculating the the loss and the gradients and updating the pre parameter vector. Um, and of course, and that further improves our uh, test accuracy. For comparison, I benchmarked uh, PyTorch uh, using an Intel distribution of Python and saw that it's over 10x slower. And also for good measure, compared with Flux and saw that Flux was you know, like 40x slower here. Um, so why was superchains so much faster? Partly it's just better use of memory, but in particular here actually the convolution layer is much faster in simple chains because uh, simple chains takes the approach of, I mean, writing everything in simple loops and turns out simple loops with NAT Turbo tend to be much better than doing things like reshaping memory to try and fit your square peg of a convolution into the round hole of a matrix multiply. Uh, 